but flipping it in OBS. And once again, Lars Juel Jensen, I'm running the fake paper detection challenge, but that's not what it's all about now. So what this is about is not so much Zoom, even though it works with Zoom, at least on Windows, it's more OBS Studio. So OBS Studio is an open source project. It's called Open Broadcaster Software. And it's something that's used a lot by people doing things like game streaming, people who are streaming computer games on Twitch, on YouTube, on Mixer, whatever all the platforms are called nowadays. And of course, since it's meant for doing things like screen sharing, live casting, having webcams, overlaying, you see how I do picture and picture here where I have two different camera angles. It's pretty powerful also if you want to use it for, for teaching. And I set this whole thing up because I was involved in running a Cytoscape course where it was supposed to be for 40 people at University of Copenhagen. And I ended up live casting it on YouTube as well as having it in Zoom and uh, had several hundred people participate real time. And it worked great. So I just want to share what you can do with OBS and uh, how it's all set up. So if you see my screen here, you see the big current scene, which is what I'm currently broadcasting. It's going into Zoom as the stream. If I was streaming to YouTube, it would be what people would be watching with maybe 10 seconds delay there on a live stream. And I'm also recording it currently to the hard drive. The key thing to understand in OPS is you have a few different things that you can play with. There's what's called scenes. Scenes are like different layouts of the screen. What you see here is one layout. I have camera one, which is my webcam sitting up there, and camera two down in the corner as a picture in picture, which is in fact a, uh, a small camera sitting up there. And you have those, and those are called sources. The different scenes, if you go camera two, you see I now have the small camera from the corner taking up the whole screen. I have a screencast. This is going to look confusing because now I'm doing screen capture and broadcasting that. And of course you end up getting the picture and picture and picture and picture. And you might've seen that when I'm away, I have a screen like this where I darken the camera too. And I have this, what is called a lower third with logo, name, website, KU logo, all those kinds of things. In each scene, you have what is called sources. And sources can be turned on and off within a scene and you can move them around. So those are kind of your objects that you put into a scene. If we look at camera one, you'll see that I have a number of sources and they are layered on top of each other. So the bottom one, like if you were doing things in Adobe Illustrator, making a figure, this is like the set stack of what's on top of each other. The lower one is not an image source at all. The lowest here is a microphone. So that's the microphone that I have, a USB microphone here that's hooked up and that just gives an audio source. Then you have the camera, which is the camera one. If I toggle the visibility by clicking on this icon, you can see if I make that invisible, it's not there, you just have the black background. Then you have a lower, which is invisible. If I turn it on, that's that part. I have slides over, um, overlay, which would show slides. If I was giving a PowerPoint presentation, you could have it up there. I have a screen overlay, where I can do the screen capture and put that up in that corner. And I have the camera two overlay that is sitting down in the corner here. So you have these different scenes and you simply add scenes by clicking the plus and then you can select a lot of different types of sources and put them in. One interesting thing that is worth noting, it works a little bit like grouping of objects, if you will, when you're doing Adobe Illustrator, is that a source can be a scene itself. So you can use a scene as a source in another scene. And that's why I have these scenes over here called overlay. So I have camera one overlay, which is camera one down in the corner with a little frame around it, which you can't see because of the black background. I have camera two overlay, which is this one over here. I have screen overlay, which is this one up here, and slides overlay that is not going to show anything because I don't have a PowerPoint presentation running. Now I use these inside the other scenes. So if you're looking at the cam one scene, 
you will see that one of my sources is CAM2 overlay, which is the scene that then in turn had a frame and the camera to stream inside it. So the sources can be audio sources, it can be video sources from multiple different cameras if you like, it can be screen capture, so you can capture your entire screen, it can be window captures, you capture a certain window on your screen, or it can actually be video streams streamed over the network from another computer. So just to show, to show you how crazy stuff you can do, if I go over here and select the scene that is called MacBook, you see this. And this is my Mac that's standing over there. So what I'm doing there is I have another instance of OBS running on the Mac, doing screen capture on the Mac, broadcasting that over the network and going in as a source in here where I'm then overlaying that source on top of an image of a Mac. So let me just show you how this works. So first you have scene collections. I'm just going to duplicate this one to not destroy the actual one when I start messing about. Test, scene collection, and now the one called test. If I unlock things, you'll be able to see what's going on here. I have MacBook OBS. That's the broadcast of the stream from the Mac. That is this thing up here. If I move it, I can resize it. I can do all these kinds of things. It's just a video stream coming in. Then I have a static source inside it, which is just a bitmap image that I imported. So this is just a picture downloaded from Apple's website of a MacBook Air. And then the other thing I have is I simply have a white background. So the neat things are you can make all these different scenes. You can have different elements in it that you turn on and off. And you can do cool stuff like being able to do that while you're live streaming by setting up hotkeys. So I can have hotkeys that turn on and off different things and change between scenes. So if, if I go Shift F1, I'm going over on the screen. Shift F6 is toggling on and off this. Shift F7 is toggling on and off that. And that way you can really, if you're used to how you've set up your hotkeys, you can sit and do stuff and flip around between camera angles and go, boom, I want this camera angle instead. I want to go back to this one. You can do that very quickly while you're doing things. So how does that all work? So you can do screen capture, you can do all those sources. I hope it's kind of obvious. You can lay them out, you'll figure that out. Cool functionality, how on earth does this end up in Zoom? Well, it's because of a plugin. And unfortunately, that plugin doesn't exist for Mac. It only exists for Windows. There are other workarounds on Mac that you can use. But there is a plugin called Virtual Cam. This is a virtual webcam. So what happens is that OBS produces a device on the Windows machine that is in fact a virtual webcam where the image coming out of that camera is the video output of OBS. And then I go into Zoom and I just tell Zoom that my webcam is this virtual webcam that is in fact OBS. So that way I'm channeling OBS into Zoom. That's what's going on there. The other cool thing you can do with how on earth did it work with the Mac? How did I get this video stream in here? Well, that works because of something called NDI, which is a protocol for streaming video over network. So if you install that plugin, you have something that is called NDI output settings, and you can create an output that has a certain name where OBS is then streaming that data out on your local network for any other device to pick up. And when you're adding sources, you can go in and say, I want to add, let's go to this one. And I say, I want to add, an NDI video source. Let's just call it NDI video source, source name. And it says, what do you find on the network here? Well, we find one that is called LJJ MacBook. I select that one. And I now have that source in my scene, which is the stream coming from OBS on my MacBook. You might've seen, I had another device as well. I had 
my iPhone. And you can even use that to actually use your phone as a webcam in OBS. So now I've started up, let's see how this works. This is going to be totally confusing. Now I have a webcam app running on my iPhone, which is sending out whatever comes out of the camera on my iPhone as an NDI stream on my network. And that means if I now click over to this one, the scene called iPhone, the OBS video stream is the output of the camera on my iPhone. You can do pretty insane things this way. Can you use the phone as a, as a microphone as well? I believe you can, yes. At least the NTI source that shows up when you have the iPhone running shows up as an audio device as well. So you might have seen there's an audio mixer down here as well. Whatever sources you put in, you have an audio mixer, you have the NTI source now. So actually this thing coming in as audio bars here, NTI source, that's this NTI source, which is my Mac. So presumably that's the microphone on the Mac picking up that I'm speaking right now. And you can obviously mute sources if you want to do that. You can adjust the levels of them, other cool things you can do. So over here you have the controls. You can stream, you can record. I'm recording all of this just so that we have good quality of it uh, as well instead of just the Zoom stream. And when you're streaming, you can of course set up where you want things to be streamed to. Let me see, where are we streaming? And you can say that you want to stream this to YouTube and then if you start it, press the start streaming button, then it would be streaming to my YouTube account as a live stream. So that's how you can do that. And of course you can do all those things in parallel. When I was running the Cytoscape course, I was running OBS and I was running Zoom, this work, which worked as the classroom on that course. And it was simultaneously having OBS being a virtual webcam channeling into Zoom for the students on that course, while live casting it for a lot of other people on YouTube while recording everything to a local to local drive on, on my machine so that I can edit the video afterwards. It's super powerful. What else can you do a fun thing? Scene transitions, you might see I have it set to fade. So when I'm changing between scenes, it's sort of fading over a period of 400 milliseconds. You can do cut where it's just doing direct hard cuts between the scenes. You can do other crazy stuff. I don't think this is really useful for when you're teaching, but if you see people doing game streaming or things like that, you will see that there are many other kinds of transitions you can do. There are things like stinger transitions, where you throw in some sort of video transition between things. Let me see what have I got here. Do I have it in downloads? Yeah, I have something. Okay, let's pick this. So this is a short video that has, oh, I need to set the transition point to I think 1000 milliseconds. So what you have here is a video that has transparency in it. So you have scene A, which is the one being shown, and then you have a transition coming. So let me preview it. So this is how it would look, transitioning from scene A to scene B. The trick in these kinds of transitions is that the video for a brief moment covers up the entire screen. So that means you are showing scene A under this transparent video, then at some point after about a second, the, the uh, transition video covers the entire screen. While you can't see what's going on, I'm changing from scene A to scene B, and when the video disappears out with transparency again, you see the new scene. So you can do a cut between scenes that way. So now that I've put that in, I should be able to change from cam one to cam two, and it does like this. I don't know why you would want to do that other than to look really fancy. Any questions to this? Uh, the times when it's gotten you into trouble, when things suddenly sort of 
shit hits the fan lecture 140 people sitting there being like what the heck is Lars doing no no hasn't been trouble it's worked remarkably well I haven't had OPS crashing I haven't had any problems like that is it taking a lot of compute sorry is it taking a lot of computing power when you're running it I mean like does it slow down your PC a lot because it's doing video capture and streaming and saving at the same time no, I mean, right now, if you see with all the encoding, recording it's doing, it's taking about 7% mm -hmm. CPU on my computer. But you have a discrete video graphic card or? I do, yes. What are some of the good MacBook workarounds for this sort of thing? I haven't looked carefully into it yet. There's, there's basically some software that you can install that is a little bit more hackish than the nice webcam plugin. I think it actually works via NDI, if I remember right, but I haven't tried it. But I would say in general, yeah, being able to plug it into Zoom is kind of neat if other people are using Zoom. But the video quality when you're broadcasting over Zoom, the compression of the video is terrible compared to what you can get if you're casting to something like YouTube. So if you really want to do teaching with it, I would prefer to go to another platform than Zoom just for pure quality, especially if you're teaching things like what I was doing, which was things like how to use Cytoscape and so on, where you need to really be able to see what I'm doing and you need high quality video. Then I would go to something like YouTube. Let's see, thank you. Welcome. I was about to ask regarding this streaming quality because there's always this trade-off, like you can stream with a bigger delay, but then the quality is going to be better or you can stream slower. Right. But it's not something OBS does, right? It's, it's the receiving side. So if exactly, you stream exactly. Twitch, so when you're setting up your live stream in YouTube, you select those things. So the most real time you can get in YouTube, it's five to 10 seconds delay which is obviously no good if what you want to do is to do a discussion like we're having now. For that, you need something that is much more instantaneous. But if what you're streaming is a lecture and if what you have is hundreds of people asking, people asking questions in the text chat and you answering it, then a time delay of five to 10 seconds is really not something that anybody's going to notice. And how does YouTube um, deteriorate the stream if, if for say, for a moment there, the bandwidth drops, will that um, deterioration then be reflected in the recording or will that just uh, be reflected in the current view if somebody's looking at it live? Depends on what you do. If, it's a, if you're live streaming to YouTube and you're looking at the video that ends up on YouTube, what you will see later is also what people saw live. Is not going to improve but of course if you are doing a local recording while you're live streaming you're going to get a perfect quality video locally on your disk you can then edit that one and upload it to youtube afterwards separate from the live stream and then you have no problems got it thanks so that's that's what i would always do and in some cases you could also argue you could pre-record the whole thing and upload it to youtube depends on what you want to do I just wanted to say that it looks uh, very easy on one side and then very professional when you're actually streaming it, especially inside of Zoom. It's not terrible. Once you wrap your head around it and you understand how to use these scenes and sources and use scenes within scenes, and once you set up your hotkeys, that's really the key thing. Because if you're clicking around to do stuff, things are slow. But once you go in and set up your hotkeys, to turn on and off different things. That's when it really starts to, to work for you. you, you need to be able to sit and do stuff, right? You need to be able to be sitting, doing a live software demo in something like Cytoscape, for example. 
while doing this kind of stuff. And that's, that's where the real power comes in, right? But if I, if I fire up, well, speaking of Cytoscape, if I fire up Cytoscape, oh dear, it's slow. Okay, I'm starting a Cytoscape here. Kill that. If I do screen capture now, you should in the video stream see that I'm running Cytoscape here. And because I have things set up with hotkeys, then without leaving Cytoscape at all, and you know, I could even go minimize OBS, take it completely off the screen here. And now I can go and turn on and off video sources and things like that. You know, I can turn one camera on, I can turn the other camera on, I can turn both of them on, I can do whatever I want. And the key trick I, I, is that I can do that while not even having OBS on the screen. It's, uh, it's interesting, something's going on with the uh, video input there, but we can see it on your no, uh, webcam it's not view, but... with the, Yeah, I think what's happening is that uh, exactly. So you see a... it on my webcam because yes. what, what I'm broadcasting in OBS goes into my webcam. But obviously oh, right. what you see on my screen capture is what I see on my screen. Mm -hmm. So what I'm but seeing on my screen is what you see in my screen capture. And you just see me running Cytoscape and my Cytoscape taking up the entire screen now. Mm -hmm. But if I turn on oh, I see. Yes. the camera up there, yeah. Then you see that the live stream that's coming out of OBS, which is what it would have gone into YouTube if I was live streaming there, has an overlay the camera of me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In the zoom, we can see it. Yeah. That's really cool. So that's what's going on there. You need to sort of wrap your head around it and yeah. You, you can get confused at times because exactly what you're seeing on your screen is not what other people are seeing because they are seeing what you're streaming, which may be your screen capture with other stuff overlaid on it. That's why it's really, really nice if you want to do this to have two screens. Because if you have two screens so that you can kick OBS over on the secondary monitor, then you're in a much nicer place. Okay. I think we are out of time as well. Yeah, we're about to finish. Uh, thank you a lot for your presentation, Lars. That's really impressive. Have you considered a pro career of professional bioinformatics streamer? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure there's a market for that. <laughs> Although I have seen some people doing really impressive stuff during this lockdown time. It's, uh, it's interesting to see how things change. And I mean, certainly being in our field, there are lots of opportunities. We're not really the ones who are terribly badly affected by being stuck at home, I have to say. Indeed. <laughs>